If you've watched two minutes of literally anything on this channel, you know that I love anime and the people who make it. And talking about the creative process behind it is, like, my favorite thing to do. So when I tell you that Netflix just released a documentary where Lashan Thomas, Adi Shankar, Shinji Aramaki, Kenji Kamiyama, Toshiki Hirano, Seiji Kishi, and Yoko Takahashi, among many others, discuss their anime industry careers and specifically where they get their ideas, and that I fucking hated every minute of it, you should know that we're dealing with a very special breed of incompetent filmmaking. Enter the Anime is a brand new documentary just released by NX on Netflix that really wants you to know that anime is cool. It's edgy. It's hip. It's edgy. It's not just for kids. It's edgy. And did I mention it's edgy? The edgiest anime creator in LA. I interviewed three of Tokyo's edgiest outlaws. And edgy as hell. This documentary is ostensibly about one woman's first steps into the world of anime, an outsider asking what it's all about and what kind of creative forces go into making it. And I don't think that's a bad idea in itself. From the outside, anime can certainly seem strange and impenetrable, and I'd enjoy watching a newcomer's earnest attempts to decipher it all, but that's not really what this is at all. Director Alex Burunova has clearly come into this with a preconceived notion that anime is the gritty, edgy product of deranged minds, another phrase that she likes to repeat a lot, usually right before talking to a decidedly normal, non-deranged person about their decidedly normal job. There's a point early in the film where she pauses to make fun of old, vaguely racist American travel documentaries that frame Japan as this strange, exotic land, and yet, to the tiny extent that it's about anything, that's exactly what Enter the Anime is. Just instead of a boring old white guy, the voiceover about how weird and wacky Japan is comes peppered with swear words from the mouth of a disaffected hipster lady. The big question at the center of the film is how such a serious, organized culture could birth such crazy, zany art, when the answer to that question is so obvious that it's just not worth asking. Japan, like every other place where humans exist, is home to a vast spectrum of different personalities, passions, and values. But they got robots, guys! No one litters! Look at all the neon! And did you know that Japanese toilets are really weird? I'd argue, as other critics have, that this documentary is trying to push a questionable Orientalist narrative by doing all of this, but that would imply that there's any narrative to it at all. Buranova's commentary consists mostly of random factoids about Japan and complaints about how hard this documentary was to make. It's little more than meaningless padding around a series of entirely disconnected interviews with the creators of various Netflix exclusive anime. Nothing that's said by Burunova or the interviewees really drives toward any kind of larger point because the whole point of this whole movie is ultimately to be an hour-long advertisement for shows that you can watch on Netflix after you're done giving it a thumbs down. Now, to be fair, getting permission to use anime footage can be pretty difficult, so they may well have needed the Netflix hookup to put this documentary together at all, and maybe that just affected their creative vision and the story that they could tell. But they don't feature any shows or creators that aren't part of the platform's most recent and upcoming lineup. There's no love for Devilman or Violet Evergarden here. It's all about the newer Netflix originals. And they don't do anything to disclose that until the credits roll. So, yeah. At a base level, this comes off as incredibly disingenuous and corporate. It essentially conflates Netflix's current agenda for what they want their anime to be like with what anime is all about, and then packages that up for a casual audience that won't know the difference and won't know until they're told at the very end who happens to own all of these shows, at which point they'll be left feeling like... A crummy commercial? Son of a... Now, it's not like there's any inherent problem with Netflix doing a series of behind-the-scenes interviews about their own shows, so long as they make it clear that that's what they're doing. I'd honestly be on board to watch that if it was any good, which this isn't. Beyond being disjointed and confused and not having any actual point, the voiceover is just really bad. As a writer, some of these lines physically hurt me. They call him the Quentin Tarantino of Digital Age. 
Japan uses more paper to print manga, or Japanese comic books, than they do to make toilet paper. Either people in Japan need to up their fiber intake, Oh, that's a shit ton of comic books. Animators and manga artists were like kings. Or to be more geographically appropriate, emperors. The Instagram celebs of yore. But you know, talented. And as a video editor watching this, I felt even more pain. The documentary does make an effort to frame the interviewees in a style reminiscent of their own work, and I will say that the individual segments focusing on Agretzko, Rilakkuma, Kengan Ashura, Be the Beginning, and Ultraman work to some extent or another, but the house style of editing used in the framing segments and some of the interviews, which makes constant use of split screens, rapid cuts, digital zooms, and video glitch effects, is fucking atrocious. It is close to impossible to find a consistent focal point on the screen when the editing is going nuts like this. And that's annoying enough in the connecting bits between interview segments, but during the interviews themselves, it's out and out distracting for the screen to be filled with all this visual nonsense set to intense music when I'm just trying to listen to what the interviewees have to say. In the case of Toshiki Hirano's interview, there were parts where I literally couldn't hear him over the music, which, to be fair, is a mistake that I've made myself as a newbie YouTuber like four years ago, so yeah. And as he's talking, the screen just freaks out. It's plastered with distracting collages of clips from Baki with a new equally hideous cut appearing like every two seconds. Because just watching a guy talk calmly about the thing you've decided to watch a documentary about is apparently too much for your tiny magpie brain to handle. I'm genuinely unsure whether this hyperactive editing is more insulting to the interview subjects or the audience, but it's impossible to stomach either way. I don't want to turn this into a big list of editing nitpicks, mostly because that would be like a four hour long video, but during their interview with Yoko Takahashi, they played just the opening bars of A Cruel Angel's Thesis like four different times in the space of six minutes, I guess because that's the only part of Ava that they think a normal person will recognize. It feels awful to watch, and it's a baffling choice considering that this is one of the most iconic, widely known foreign language pop songs in Western culture. And that cultural ubiquity is what the fucking interview is about. My brother-in-law, who doesn't watch anime at all, has told me that he thinks it's one of the greatest pop songs ever made. It's also, like, the anime meme song, behind only, maybe. And. I guarantee that not only would the casual target audience of this documentary recognize other parts of this song, they would appreciate and enjoy hearing it build up over the course of the interview leading into the live performance shown in the documentary. They'd also probably appreciate hearing some of that live performance instead of bad karaoke and the exact same track they've heard on YouTube a million times. I know I would have, but everything in this documentary is so surface level that putting in a bit of the performance for the fans probably never crossed the editors' minds. And that's what really hurts about watching Enter the Anime. This film contains an absolute treasure trove of great, and I mean truly great, interview footage with important, influential, and knowledgeable figures in the anime industry talking in depth about their careers, their unique production methodologies, their creative processes, and it's all butchered beyond recognition pureed into bite-sized five-minute chunks with no time to explore anything that they're talking about in any kind of depth. They go behind the scenes at Polygon Pictures, a studio on the bleeding edge of CGI anime development where Hiroyuki Seshita and Keisuke Ide explain their entire production pipeline, and all of that information is cut down to just one sentence for each step of the process. All of these great subjects are absolutely wasted on this garbage production. I'm sure there's at least a few interesting stories about the anime industry that they could have told with the footage they have. This could easily have been a documentary about the industry's evolution toward 3D CG, or the pros and cons of the different styles of anime. Between LaShawn Thomas and Adi Shankar, not to mention Yoko Shimamura's comments about foreign fans, they could have touched on the globalization of anime too. But none of these story threads 
have any room to be unraveled. The only question this documentary really asks is like, what even is an anime, you guys? And it doesn't even fucking answer that! In spite of how mad I've gotten in this video, I think that this documentary is mostly harmless. It offends my sensibilities as an anime fan, and I think it does a pretty poor job of representing the movement, the community around it, and the culture in which it originated, but then so does a lot of the discourse within the anime community, including arguably some of the things I've published on this channel. Enter the Anime does put a large and diverse group of infinitely complex individuals into a few very reductive boxes, but that speaks to a bigger problem with how people People in general look at other cultures, and this shitty documentary isn't going to make that situation any worse than it already is. That said, there is one part of this film that didn't just annoy me, it made me really fucking angry. Now, if you don't know anything about the anime industry, those might sound like regular old complaints that most of us have about our terrible jobs, so let me set you straight about something. Most new animators in Japan, especially in hubs of anime production with very high costs of living like Tokyo, make less than minimum wage. Sometimes, often, a lot less. The standard model for anime production, which hasn't changed in decades, is that instead of a salary, animators make around 200 yen in commission for each drawing they complete. That's about $2. It takes a good while to make each of these drawings. A proficient animator can probably produce about 20 of them in a long day, so your average in-between animator is forced to work very long days with few breaks while earning less money than they would at a convenience store on a part-time schedule. And since budgets for anime productions haven't really increased despite the industry pulling in record profits each year, those low wages are common at basically every stage of the production food chain. According to a Japanese Animation Creators Association survey from 2015, the average salary for a series director is less than $60,000 a year. Turnover rates for animators in Japan are unsurprisingly super high, which has created a situation where there aren't enough animators to go around. The animators who do stick with it are all very passionate about their work, and companies take advantage of that passion to squeeze as much productivity as possible from these people until they quit or die. You know all the nightmare crunch stories we've heard coming out of the video game industry lately? People sleeping at their desks, working overnight, having nervous breakdowns? Well, due to poor scheduling and overbooking at anime studios, those conditions are pretty much the norm for most of the industry. Even within the anime community, awareness of these systemic problems and the horrible conditions in which many of our favorite shows are made is kinda lacking. In mainstream pop culture, that awareness is almost non-existent, and that one of the first large, widely publicized, mainstream-targeted documentaries about anime glosses over it completely like this is a big problem. Now, I'm under no illusions that this documentary was ever going to shine a real spotlight on these issues. By the same token that you're never going to see a Nike commercial go behind the scenes at the sweatshop where your Air Jordans were made, it would just be bad marketing to draw a connection between the original series Netflix's advertising and the anime industry's generally pervasive culture of worker abuse. Knowing this is an ad, I could almost forgive the filmmakers for simply not telling that part of the story, but that's not what they did. They explicitly packaged together footage of all of these different creators venting about the exhausting hardships of their jobs, where getting six hours of sleep a night is a pipe dream, and framed those moments within the documentary's narrative to say, look at how passionate and self-sacrificing these quirky artists choose to be in order to make the art they love. Which, of course, ignores the fact that by grossly underpaying and overworking its staff, the anime industry all but forces those sacrifices on any creator who wants to make that art while also making a living. This is a devious lie by omission that reframes the effects of systemic employee abuse as consequences of personal choices, and that alternative narrative is dangerous. It doesn't just avoid concerns about industry practices, but actively minimizes and erases those problems. This documentary is intended to be an entry point to the anime fandom for general Netflix audiences, so if it succeeds, which it probably won't because it is terrible, 
it could potentially create a lot of new anime fans. And those new fans won't just be ignorant of the industry's underlying problems, they'll be coming in with a manufactured perspective that frames those problems as not being problems at all. In a worst case scenario, those fans might not just be apathetic towards movements for industry reform, but actively opposed to them. And that is a worst case scenario. I'm not trying to doomsay here, but it's a possibility. And it is, in the most charitable assessment of Netflix's motives here, grossly irresponsible of them to create that possibility. A less charitable interpretation might suggest that they're intentionally laying the groundwork to fight back against changes that might make their cheap source of animated entertainment more expensive, but it's always best to assume incompetence before malice, and looking at the rest of this film, that does seem to be the more likely explanation. They probably just didn't know enough about the subject to get this part right. At any rate, for that message to do harm, the people watching this would actually have to remember it, and fortunately, just like all the potential potentially good content hiding in its footage, this awful idea is ultimately subsumed into the bland, incoherent melange of the documentary's non-existent narrative. I've talked about a good share of bad art on this channel over the years, but none of them have felt quite this soulless. Enter the Anime seems like it started as someone's idea for a cool way to advertise Netflix's anime lineup, and nobody ever bothered to develop the concept beyond that. Now, despite how hard they've worked to hide them, there are a few interesting nuggets of information to be found here, a few cute and fun moments with the interview subjects, but it's simply not worth entering the anime and slogging through the headache-inducing editing and mindless product placement to find them. For Netflix's anime report card, I'm giving this Drek an F minus minus. It's such a complete and total failure that we'd be better off if they'd never tried at all. I know that there are plenty of better, if more obscure, anime documentaries out there, so let me know in the comments below which are your favorites and why. And while you're down there, there's a bunch of stuff that YouTube tells me to tell you to do so that my channel can survive, so please do that. I'm Jeff Thu, Professional Shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.